Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of The Nostalgia Factor, and quite possibly one of the longer videos that I'll be doing uh, here for some time anyway. So guys, uh, if you guys can tell by the title here, I've done a video similar to this in the past where I've shown you guys uh, an early stage, I guess you could call line, of my Final Fantasy VII collection. For those of you guys who don't know here on the channel, I am a huge, not only retro video gamer, you guys can tell from the reviews and everything else, but I also have a massive retro video game merchandise collection. Uh, not so much of the physical video games nowadays, but more so merchandise from video games that I love, most notably from the Final Fantasy series, and more specifically, Final Fantasy VII. So I figured, guys, since that video, I've accumulated a lot more items, some really cool stuff, and obviously, even after this video is posting, I'm still going to be getting stuff from my collection and everything else, surrounding Seven, some other games that I really love, and I figured I'd show you guys an updated version of the collection. So this really isn't going to be edited or anything else, it's going to be pretty much a straight shot video, and I hope you guys are going to enjoy seeing this one. I'll show you guys all parts of the collection, kind of explain a few things about them, and yeah, hope you guys enjoy seeing it, along with my expert commentary, I suppose you could say. So without any further ado guys, this is my updated 2023 currently Final Fantasy VII merchandise collection slash other game merchandise, because there are some other properties mixed in there, so let's get started. First and foremost, guys, this is the newest thing that I've accumulated in my collection. This is a framed ad for Star Ocean the Second Evolution. This is actually one of the cooler or rarer pieces in my collection. So I've recently been playing Star Ocean the Second Story R, and I've, I became a huge fan of the game right before I even started actually playing it uh, via the PS4. So I was doing some research into some cool or rare merchandise. Lo and behold, I came across this on eBay. So I purchased a rare double-sided poster from the UK, of all places, and I eventually got it shipped over here. And you guys can tell here from the framework and whatnot as well, I took the poster, even though it is double-sided. The other side looks like the PSP cover art. Because Star Ocean Second Story was port, uh, they got Second Evolution is the PSP remake, and then Second Story R is the newest, like, full-blown remake. So, this is pretty cool, this is double-sided, I took it to a local frame shop, got the ad framed up, and this is an actual advertisement that was used in a game store for Star Ocean Second Evolution. And this thing's pretty cool, I actually really like this. I'm really enjoying Star Ocean Second Story R at this point, has the potential to be one of my favorite games of all time, not even kidding. But I'll let you guys know that at a later date. But this is the newest and latest piece I have in my collection, and this is pretty cool. The one game ad I actually have that is framed up, so very, very cool on that one. So outside of the second Evolution poster, uh, which I ended up getting online, next here is the Super Famicom port of Final Fantasy VI. You guys know I've talked about this game a bit here and there. I absolutely love this game as well. Also one of my favorite games of all time. I just wanted another version of the game since there really isn't a ton of merchandise out there for Final Fantasy VI itself. But that's just a really cool addition as well. This I've shown in the past as well. This is the Aerith Gainsborough figure from Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. That's Aerith's design from that game. Uh, Crisis Core is a prequel to the original Final Fantasy VII, for those of you who didn't know. This is a cool piece I got off Amazon. wasn't too much money at the time, so I just thought it was something pretty cool to add as well. Over here, similar case to the Aerith figure, this is a, an original Final Fantasy VII Vincent Valentine design. Uh, this wasn't the same line. Actually, I don't know if this was the same line from the Crisis Core line or not. I'm not sure exactly when the Crisis Core line came out. This one, I think, was the early 2000s when they released the original seven figures. And this is one of Vincent Valentine. One of the cheaper figures I actually ended up getting from my collection, also off of Amazon, which is pretty cool. Love Vincent as a character. And obviously from that same original 7 line, this Tifa figure came from as well. This is Tifa's original depiction in the game. This was actually one of the more expensive figures I bought off of Amazon a few years ago. But it's still a pretty cool addition to the collection nonetheless. I really like this one as well. Up here we have an original copy of Final Fantasy VII. Fairly standard and straightforward there. Just an original copy of the PS1 game. But I figured it earned its own little uh, display at this point. Over here is also one of the newer additions as well. This is a Sephiroth Final Fantasy VII Advent Children figure. Um, this one is specifically from the Advent Children line. Not from the Crisis Core or the original Seven, But they came out with a number of figures from the original 
Final Fantasy VII Advent Children movie, uh, with their redesigns and everything else. Although, to be honest, Sephiroth kind of looks the same, roughly, so. But this is still insanely cool to have as well. Absolutely really like this figure as well. Managed to track that down through a local game store, whereas these ones over here I managed to get online. This over here also got online. This was a Final Fantasy VII Advent Children Bahamut Sin. This is the big dragon that's summoned by Kadaj and some of the other Sephiroth remnants in the movie that Cloud and friends have to fight. This one's pretty cool. I got this one off of Amazon as well. Now, this is probably, out of all the figures I have, the most worn. You guys can see the yellowing inside of the packaging. Uh, it probably wasn't stored correctly, um, which was the condition that it was in when I bought it. This one was a relatively cheaper figure as well. Not as expensive as the T or the Sephiroth ones by any means. But this was still one of the cheaper ones maybe because of the condition. But it's still pretty cool to have. Love the design on Bahamut Sin as well. Just extremely iconic. So in addition to that, you guys can see over here, just worth mentioning, this is a promotional lunchbox for Super Princess Peach from the Nintendo DS. I haven't played the game, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. And it was just like a cool, cheaper thing I picked up at some point. I can't really remember where I bought it. I think it was at a local game store of some sort. But honestly, I could not tell you. But it's just a cool addition. This I've actually done a full-blown video on the channel of unboxing. This is the Castlevania Portrait of Ruin Nintendo DS pre-order bundle. Uh, the game came out in 2006, and you could buy this bundle that has like a timeline poster, a vinyl soundtrack CD, and a few other things in there, like an art book. So, I've already unboxed it. If you guys want to check that video out, it's back on the channel. Uh, if I remember, I'll link it in the description. But this is still a pretty cool piece to have. Also bought that on the internet. And a copy of Chrono Trigger on the Nintendo DS and some of the other Castlevanias down there. So, all bought at uh, my local game store chain, except for the Pokemon Ranger. I've had that since I was a kid. These are just general PS2 games and whatnot. Nothing really too noteworthy for my core merchandise collection. That there is actually the copy currently of Final of Star Ocean Second Story R that I've started to play through. I'm about five hours in so far. Pretty good game so far. Uh, this back here, this is actually one of the cooler, uh, more recent items that I've picked up. This is another Star Ocean Second Story uh, piece of memorabilia here. This was a calendar released back in 2002, and when I bought it off of eBay as well, this one was already wrapped. So before I opened it, this thing hadn't been opened since 2002. What's cool about this is not only is it a cool pocket calendar from back in the day, but it features a lot of original artwork. I can't remember the artist's name, but the artist who worked on the original Star Ocean Second Story includes some pretty cool artwork in here as well that you guys can kind of see some examples of. Uh, covering all 12 months. So they took 12 of the pieces that this guy worked on and put them into this version of the calendar. There is a 2001 version, which I do not have, but I've considered getting. But this is just a pretty cool piece of memorabilia here, kind of depicting some of the characters from the game. And overall, it's just a pretty cool little neat thing. This wasn't cheap off of eBay either, but honestly, where else are you going to find an old piece of gaming memorabilia like a calendar from, what, about 20 years ago or so? So, but this was still a cool piece to get. Love the artwork with it. So, moving that aside there as well, the other cool piece that I have to show you guys here on this shelf is the Final Fantasy VII Collectible Edition. Uh, this was essentially an Extra Knight. The, all these figures here came with the Extra Knights figure line that released back in 1997 or 1998. This I also managed to score through a local game store chain of mine when I saw they posted it online. This is probably the oldest piece of merchandise, I want to say, because this one's directly from 1997 or 1998, and this is just really cool. Uh, granted, while the box itself looks good and most of the figures are in good shape, one thing I will note about this one is Cloud. Uh, he's missing a few spikes there. Looks like he got a really bad haircut, and uh, one of the feet of the chocobo over here is impaled next to Cloud, so yeah. Not the perfect condition for the Cloud figure or the little bit of damage. I guess, on the Chocobo. But all in all, it's still in good shape, and honestly, where else are you going to find some of this stuff? I'm just really glad to have found this for a good price. So, that's the Final Fantasy VII collectible box set edition, mainly consisting of the Extra Knight figures as well. Move that off for later. Over here is the also one of the newer additions to the collection. This is the Final Fantasy VII Extra Knights figure of Vincent. Don't really have a ton of Vincent stuff in the collection, and this was one of the cheaper Extra Knight figures I was able to get off of eBay. It wasn't that expensive. It was like 30 to 40 bucks at the time. Maybe a little lower than 30 
But this is still pretty cool. Figured I'd peg that up on the wall for display purposes. If I get any other smaller extra knit figures like this, I'll probably do the same thing. But this is still pretty cool. It's in good shape. No complaints from me there. This here, if you're interested in any of the displays, by the way, outside of the uh, Star Ocean Second Story ad that I showed you guys earlier that's framed, pretty much everything else that I have display-wise is bought off of Amazon. So if you guys are interested in any of like the tin posters or some of the other uh, framed stuff that I have, you can go on Amazon and purchase them for not too, not too much money. This is a Chrono Trigger uh, tin poster that I bought off of Amazon. wasn't too expensive whatsoever. Figured it looked cool and hang up. Really good artwork on it too. Chrono Trigger is also one of my favorite games of all time, so I absolutely love this game. So you should definitely pick this up if you're interested in a cooler, cheap display. This here is the Famicom version of Chrono Trigger. Once again, I bought it because there's not a ton of merchandise for it out there, and I figured another version of the game would be pretty cool. And then the same case for Final Fantasy VI, or as it originally came out in the U.S. as Final Fantasy III in 1994, before that name was thankfully changed. But again, I bought this. It's fully complete with everything, map, manual, insert, in the game, and everything else. It's not sealed. It has a protective case on it, for those of you who are noticing the glare on it. But it is still a cool piece in the collection nonetheless, because again, there really isn't a ton of Final Fantasy VI merchandise out there. This here is something I would consider more of an impulse buy from a few years ago. I purchased this off of Amazon right after I played Final Fantasy X for the first time, and I was playing Final Fantasy X 2, I believe, at the time as well. And this is a pain from Final Fantasy X 2. Not a bad figure whatsoever. I do like Final Fantasy X 2. It's a solid enough game, but not one of my favorites. Uh, this one I've considered selling and whatnot as well, but it's still cool to have right here in the collection for now. So it, it works well enough. But anyway, down below it there, another bigger piece that I have here is the Final Fantasy VII Advent Children Play Arts action figure. So essentially this is the biggest thing that I own uh, figure or merchandise wise currently in the base collection. This is of Cloud and Fenrir from Advent Children. That's Cloud's design from the movie, taking place two years after the original game. The motorcycle Fenrir that he rides, as well as his, I can't remember the name of his new sword. Kind of looks like the Buster Sword, but it's not. And I suspect this one was taken out of box, which I believe was in the seller description, because you guys can see a bit of the wear on the bike. So this thing isn't sealed or anything, uh, which is fine, because it was for a good enough price, and I actually received this as a birthday gift or a gift from some family members, which was extremely nice of them to get for me. So this was a gift. I didn't buy this one personally, but it's just an awesome figure, not just because it was given to me, but it's just a really cool figure to have. But this thing is fairly massive. It might be a little bit bigger than what you guys are thinking. Well, this is still a cool piece to have in the collection nonetheless. And again, it's just some general PS2 stuff down below. If you transition over to here, however, this is the Final Fantasy VI. It's a massive Final Fantasy VI framed poster. The poster, like I said before, I bought this off of Amazon. It's really not too much money. It was like 10 to 15 bucks somewhere in there the frame job once again same place i took the star ocean second story of the second evolution ad i took it to that same frame shop in my area he does really good work but the frame jobs uh i would imagine in general are not cheap whatsoever it's definitely more expensive than the poster but it is quality but this poster in particular depicts every single member for the most part of the final fantasy 6 cast you have like cyan edgar sabin gal celeste Terra, Locke, Setzer. You guys kind of get the idea if you guys have played 6 at this point. Shadow, Realm, Strago, uh, Umaru, Mog. Again, it depicts almost everybody. There's one character missing from here as well. And I can't recall off the top of my head who is missing. Uh, let me know in the comments if you notice. But, yeah, this is just a really cool poster to have as well. And uh, it's a, probably the biggest framed one that I have. It covers most of this wall that it's on currently. So, but it's just really cool to have there as well. I absolutely love that one. So we transition over to here. The next noteworthy one as part of the collection would be this framed Chrono... Well, not framed, but this Chrono Trigger tin poster. The artwork on here is actually from uh, the artist who did Chrono Trigger. Also the artist behind Dragon Ball, if I can remember his name correctly here. You know, it's like a good... Uh... His name's is Akira Toriyama, that's it. Akira Toriyama did the artwork for this. Uh, this tin poster is based off of one of the advertisements that he did, depicting most of the Chrono Trigger main party. Uh, they are missing one person in here. Uh, Magus, he's optional, so I guess he 
doesn't particularly count, but they are missing Ayla here from the main party. But this is still a pretty cool tin poster you can pick up for around 10 bucks or so. Nothing too crazy there. This over here is also extremely cool. This was actually one of the first displays I ever got. This is a Final Fantasy VII wall scroll depicting every party member except for Sid on there, as well as Sephiroth. This one's just a really cool wall scroll. I was absolutely happy to get my hands on this, also off of Amazon. Uh, again, not too much money. Honestly, the only thing about this one uh, that I can remember right off the bat is that this was definitely one of the... I'd say the cooler options that I found online. I absolutely really loved this wall scroll. Uh, this was the first major display that I ever got. So I definitely recommend picking this one up if you are a Final Fantasy VII fan. Over here, same thing. Oh, by the way, that over there is based off of uh, one of the strategy guides that came out for Final Fantasy VII. If some of you guys recognize the artwork on here, this was from a strategy guide. This over here is not. This, I believe, is a... I think this is a piece of fan art, actually, that somebody worked on for Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. Uh, this is the designs of everybody, like, two years later. You can kind of see the difference there. But this is an original piece of artwork, also purchased off of Amazon for a wall scroll that I got for Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. This is pretty cool fan art. Whoever drew this up did a good job. This, like the other wall scroll, is not very expensive. You can find all these on Amazon as well. So, but that's just a really cool display to have as well. Kingdom Hearts 2, not really part of the collection necessarily, but still pretty cool. I like the game a lot. Another framed piece I have over here is some original artwork. Not original, but a uh, poster based off of original artwork from Final Fantasy VI. <clears throat> this was original artwork done for the game itself. I absolutely love this poster. One of the first poster projects I ever worked on. Once again, bought this off of Amazon and had it framed up in my local frame shop. Love the artwork on here. Uh, it's just fantastic. Big fan of six. If you are as well, I would recommend purchasing this one. Another cool piece as well. This is not based off of promotional art or anything. Somebody actually edited and made this poster as like a custom job. But I bought this off of Amazon and it's depicting the entire Chrono Trigger crew on top of Epoch above Guardian 1000 AD. If you play the game, you know what all of that means. But this is based off of Chrono Trigger itself with all the party members and everything. This is pretty cool. I absolutely love this poster as well. It depicts everything you would need to know about Chrono Trigger just at a glance. The beautiful visuals, the character animations, uh, the cool settings, the ship. You got everything you need to know right there to know this is just an awesome game. But absolutely love this poster as well. Definitely pretty cool. Uh, this one here, I didn't really know a ton about. I believe this company made a number of Final Fantasy figures. Uh, they made two for seven. One was Cloud and one was Sephiroth. I actually bought this trading arts figure off of Facebook Marketplace off a guy. And I don't th uh, it was like ten bucks or something like that. I'm sure it goes for more than that online, but this was just something cool to pick up I found in my area. Uh, which I don't normally see this type of stuff for sale. But it was still pretty cool to see nonetheless. So yeah, just a cool simple figure there. This over here is a copy of Final Fantasy VII Advent Children on DVD. Also, that's not very expensive whatsoever. There's not really anything worth mentioning with the DVD. Except for the fact that this was supposed to be like the special base collector's edition. Not the big box one with like the cloud figure or anything. But this was supposed to come with like a sleeve and like nicer condition and everything else. But it was ultimately fine. I bought it for cheap off of Amazon. It comes with a bonus DVD still and I'm fine without the sleeve. These things are pretty cheap. But it's still pretty cool to have nonetheless. Transition over here. This is one of the most expensive things, I think, in the collection at base price. Outside of a few other things. This is a Tifa Lockhart Play Arts Kai figure based off of a Final Fantasy VII Remake design. This is actually one of the cooler statue figures that I have in the collection. You can real This version of Tifa outfit-wise looks very similar to her original depiction. But obviously they had to change the things up for the remake for more modern audience. But nonetheless, this is still pretty cool, very detailed, absolutely love this figure as well. And for the exact same reason why the other one over here for Rufus Shinra is also incredibly detailed. This is also one of the first statues that I purchased for the collection. I absolutely love this figure as well. This is based off his Advent Children design. I have all the extra pieces and boxes, by the way, too, for these statues to interchange them out and change the display in case anyone's curious. But I like them out like this. So, but the Rufus Shinra one, pretty cool as well. You guys can see back here, 
the Final Fantasy VII Remake based collector's edition with like the steelbook, the art book, the soundtrack, and the game itself. I have played Final Fantasy VII Remake. I love the original game more, but Remake Part 1, it's a really good title as well. At least in terms of the story and everything. But those are the components of the collector's edition. Over here, you guys can see, uh, discounting the Aerith figure at the end, these figures here from Cloud Over, all of these over here are part of that Final Fantasy VII PS1 Polygon like mystery box set, uh, which you could buy them online and then randomly take them out of the packaging to see like what figure you could get. The Cloud and Drag figure over here was like the mystery chase figure. Uh, one that you weren't sure if you were going to get that was supposed to be rare. But these things are just extremely cool. I also got this as a gift as well from, from some family members, uh, which I absolutely love. Uh, these things are modeled perfectly from the original PS1 blocky polygon designs. Say what you will about how it's aged, but still has some charm to it. But these are just extremely cool to have as well. And then this one over here, this is actually a Coca-Cola figure. And actually, I bought this off of eBay for cheap, and I do intend to go for the rest of the Coca-Cola line. But this is just extremely cool in detail. This is from, I believe, the early 2000s, if I can get the camera to focus there. But this is just extremely cool. They made three different lines of Final Fantasy VII figures, the chibi versions, regular versions, and like crystal red Coke variants. So those are cool. You guys can, if you can see there, the Coke symbol at the bottom. Well, this is an extremely cool, rare piece of merchandise. I believe it was released with Coca-Cola bottles in Japan. And hopefully I can get the rest of the Final Fantasy VII line someday. So that's pretty cool. And I think the last major piece I really want to show you guys here is this Red 13 figure. Probably the most detailed out of all the ones I have, given the fact that Red 13 is a four-legged lion creature. <laughs> but it's really cool. Love the detail on this one. This is also a Play Arts Kai figure based off his Final Fantasy VII remake design. Absolutely love the detail on him from the mane to the headdress to the tattoos that he has, the flame on his tail. This is just incredibly detailed. Very, very cool statue. I got this one also as a gift, so that would be like three major things I've gotten for my collection as gifts currently. But it's just all really, really cool stuff. But I absolutely love this Red 13 figure, and it's just fantastic. Absolutely amazing. But that's the basis of everything I have merchandise-wise currently in the collection, guys. Fairly sizable, but still extremely cool to have. And I absolutely love this collection, and it's taken me a few years to even build this thing up in the first place. Obviously, I've had some help here and there in terms of receiving gifts from family members and everything else. But a lot of this stuff from the displays, because I've shown you guys some other stuff I have, like the Kingdom Hearts 2 display, the Final Fantasy XII display, which currently isn't up at this house, but I still have them. But I have a lot of stuff, and I do intend to grow the collection more as time goes on. I mainly just wanted to stick with the merchandise side of things for games I like, as well as the actual framed art and the actual ad I have dis uh, on display currently for Star Wars and Second Evolution. But that's everything I have currently. This is just an extremely cool collection, and I do intend to grow it as time goes on when I have the time and the resources, of course, uh, financially speaking. Not going to break the bank on collecting or anything like that, but when I have disposable spare income, absolutely. I would recommend to anyone who's wanting to start a collection like this, don't pull from your personal funds, but if you do get some spare money that you don't have to use for bills or anything else and you're passionate about wanting to do a collection like this, absolutely step into it when you can find it. Don't just jump into buying anything online like off of eBay or Amazon because that is one way to screw yourself on prices because you might buy one thing for 100 bucks and then see it listed, I'd say probably a few weeks later for maybe like 30 or 40 So be a smart shopper as well. Use money when you have the time and the resource available to you. Like I said, don't be dipping into your bank account to try and purchase stuff like this outright. But do it when you have... Again, disposable income, and be smart about what you purchase and when you buy it. So, do your research, basically. But that's the majority of the collection I want to show you guys. Uh, eventually, if I, as I get more stuff into the collection from Final Fantasy VII and a few other games that I do like, because I even have some stuff coming in currently that I purchased off of eBay. This is still a very cool collection. I may do an update, is what I'm saying in a video. So... But this is the whole of the collection I wanted to show you guys for this video today. When kind of the raw experience of showing you guys currently what I have and kind of explaining uh, some aspects of some of the stuff, like where I bought it and that kind of thing. 
But let me know what you guys think about the collection down below. Do you guys find anything in here notably cool? Anything you guys have in your collections? Anything you want? Do you guys have collections you're currently collecting for? For retro game memorabilia or just anything in general? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know anything you guys think in the comments section down below. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. And thank you guys for sticking with me on this journey. I absolutely appreciate it. Uh, this journey being the video, of course, as well, uh, for sticking around this long to watch it. Thank you guys very much. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. Like the video if you guys did enjoy it. It really does help the channel out and the video. And subscribe if you guys want to catch more videos like this in the future on retro gaming goodness. Whenever I do upload as well as reviews, collaborations with other YouTubers, and all the other stuff you guys know I do here on the channel. And thank you guys once again for all your support. I appreciate every single one of you guys. And until next time, this has been Ryan from the Nostalgia Factor saying, keep on gaming guys. Take care of yourselves.